What's up guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Bright Cellars, but more about that later. Today we're getting into crushable summer wine cocktails. My name is Leandro Demon Riva. This is the Educated Barfly. I love you, but why you gotta pronounce a Montelato like that? Let's get into making the cocktail. So the first cocktail that we're doing today is called the Tinto de Verano, which is the Spanish equivalent of red wine of summer or a summer red. This cocktail is really, really popular in Spain, and it's basically just like a one-off sangria. It's super easy to do. So first thing we're gonna do is open this wine. I can even, I don't have nails right now, so I can't even get the, the little guy out. We're just gonna cut the foil off real quick. Voila. So this cocktail is usually just a mix of red wine and lemon soda or like a bitter lemon soda. Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit gussied up version of it. So I made this nice lemon sherbet. Obviously this isn't ice cream. It is an old school punch base. So to make a lemon sherbet, all you need is a bowl, four lemons, peeler, a muddler or any blunt instrument to smash the peels and some sugar. Peel the peels with a peeler. <laughs> Peel the peels of the peeler. But you wanna make sure that you don't get a lot of pith. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a cup and a half or 375 grams of sugar, and then we're gonna take our blunt instrument and we're gonna kinda of stir the peels around to get as much oil out of them as I can. We're gonna cover this with cling wrap and put it in the refrigerator. Now you wanna let this sit for at least an hour, but I like to let it sit overnight to make sure that the sugar extracts as much of the oil out and you get this nice kind of goopy oleosaccharum. And you wanna make sure that you hang on to your lemons because we're gonna reserve those for juicing. You're actually gonna need probably a couple extra lemons on top because we're gonna to need to get about 12 ounces of juice. So let's put this in the fridge. So here's our oleosaccharum 24 hours later. We've got some really nice oils in here. As you can see, the oils have like started to work itself into the sugar. We're gonna need to get 12 ounces of juice, which is 360 mils. So when I juice, I like to set up a little contraption like this with a measuring glass and a fine strainer because I don't wanna get all of the pulp inside the juice. Pulp is something that is completely up to you, but I don't like to have pulp in my juice. So we're just gonna juice these up real quick. Oh, that's like right on the money. Gave me exactly 360 mils, pretty much. So now with your oleosaccharum done, what we're gonna do is just add the oleosaccharum into a pot. You wanna put it on medium heat, and we're gonna add in our juice. So we're gonna give it a nice stir, and we're gonna incorporate it, and we basically wanna heat it until the sugar has completely melted and dissolved. It should have a pretty thick, syrupy consistency when it's done. And there you got your lemon sherbet. So we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of our lemon sherbet. So then we're just gonna add three ounces of a medium bodied or full bodied red wine, depending on what you wanna do. I'm using this Syrah blend, which is a blend of Syrah and Portuguese grape varietals. It's got notes of black cherry, boysenberry, black pepper. So we're just gonna do three ounces, just straight into the glass. And then we're just gonna add some ice in, give it a little stir. And then we're just gonna do a little lemon twist here. Express that oil. Let's take a sip. That is fantastically good. Not only do you get all of those nice cherry, boysenberry, black pepper notes from the wine, but you get this nice, you know, kind of brightness from the uh, little bit of zest that we put on top of there. So the great thing about using something like lemon sherbet is that not only do you have the acid from the lemon and you have the sweetness from the sugar, but you get all of that ambrosial essence of the lemon. Does that make sense? You get all of that just wonderful lemon flavor without too much acid. So it doesn't get thrown out of balance. So you get to really utilize the full flavor profile of the lemon. So the Tinto de Verano was first created in the early 20th century, somewhere around 1900 by a guy named Federico Vargas. He was a bar owner of a place called La Br Brillante. La, eh, no, sorry, not La. It's El, Br Br El Brillante. So I was having a little trouble with the rolling of my R's. El Brillante in Cordoba, Spain, and it just became a smash hit and has continued to be a hit, and now it is a staple drink of summer. So there you guys have it, the Tinto de Verano. So the next cocktail we're doing today is Frosé, which really had a moment in 2017 and 2018, and then all of a sudden just kind of went away. Is Frosé passé? I really hope not, because the thing is, is that I love Frosé. It's just such a nice template to play with that I really hope that it didn't go away. But if it did go away, we're bringing it back. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pan. So this is a 13 by nine inch baking pan, and we're gonna throw a bottle of Rosé in here. I'm using a medium bodied Rosé here. If you go 
a little bit drier and lighter, just know that you're gonna have a drier and lighter result. I like to have a little bit more kind of fruit flavors in my froze, so we're going with this. And then we're just going to dump it all into the pan like so, and we're gonna freeze it over 24 hours. So for this recipe, we're gonna need strawberry syrup, and it's really pretty simple. Add 125 mils of water, 125 grams of sugar, combine it until it starts to melt. Then off heat, we are gonna take a jar, we're gonna add in our simple syrup, and we're gonna add in 250 grams of strawberries. And then we're just gonna seal this up. They say that this will infuse in a half an hour, which you can do, but obviously the longer you let it sit, the more it's gonna infuse. I like to let this sit for 24 hours, just like this. And then you get a really nice infusion of fresh strawberry flavor. So now we have our rosé straight out of the freezer and it is not going to fully solidify because of the alcohol content. We're just gonna take a fork here and we're just gonna break it up. All right, so now we have our boozy granita and we're just gonna add all of it into a blender here. So next thing we're gonna do is cut up some lemons and squeeze them. We're gonna add in two ounces of lemon juice and three and a half ounces of strawberry syrup. Now for me, this is a great low ABV sipper, but if you wanna knock it up a little notch, you could actually put two to four ounces of gin in here as well and make it more of a proper cocktail. But today we're just gonna do the low ABV. Let her rip. Now pour a nice batch and makes about six of these guys into here. And there you have your froze. Let's taste this. This looks so good. Look at that. And it's fantastic. So you get, you know, obviously the acid of the lemon and get that nice strawberry right up front. And then it kind of devolves to that nice sort of little bit of dryness, but also that nice body of the rosé. It's really nice because all of the ingredients just play an equal part in this cocktail. There's not one star. All of them are just really nicely balanced and har harmonious. And the strawberry is really nice because it's playing into the flavor profile that you find in the rosé. So um, it's accentuated, but it's not overtaking anything. And it's just really nice and well-balanced. There it is, guys. Froze all day, every day. Hey. So today's video is sponsored by Bright Cellars. I don't know about you guys, but I hate shopping for wine in the store. When I go to the store, it is very easy to just get overwhelmed by the amount of choices that you have. It's very easy for me to get overwhelmed pick something and then end up something that I really don't like. So that's why I was really stoked to be able to partner up with and try Bright Cellars, a wine subscription box service that brings you wines from all over the world. All you gotta do is go to their website, fill out a short survey that talks about your flavor profiles and a little bit about your lifestyle and bada bing, bada boom, you got your wine box. So inside each box, you have these little flavor cards that tell you the ABV, where it's from, flavor profiles, everything you need to know about the wine so that you're fully informed. And then you get your wine in this cute little package that looks like that. Each package has four bottles. So I'm a pretty adventurous guy when it comes to flavor profiles, whether it's food or cocktails or wine. And uh, I like to go out and try new things. Thing is, is that when I go to the store, I usually have a standby bottle of wine or two. There's usually like two that I'll go to because I have tried in the past to sort of branch out. And even though I read Wine Spectator and even though I do my research or uh, staff recommends, there's a 50-50 chance that I'm gonna get burned by the bottle. And that's why I really like having used Bright Cellars because every bottle that I've gotten from them has been on point. And the best part about all this is that you guys get 60% off. So click the link in the description below and you can get some awesome wine too. And then you can make these cocktails. Boom, so there you have it guys. Crushable summer wine cocktails. Need I say more? If you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Check out our website, theeducatedbarfly.com for articles, the virtual bottle program that puts you in the heat of the action and a uh, couple of articles I've written. So uh, go check those out and I'll see you guys on another time.